What's good, villagers? This is Blackleaf here. Welcome back to another reaction video to Casual Geo Graphics. So, you guys like today's video? Definitely don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you guys continue to think of Hood Nature's, well, Casual Geo Graphics, excuse me, of their content because I love the content of dev. I try to avoid the TikTok so much because they gather a lot of videos together. Or I could just straight up go to the TikTok and just watch, watch a bunch of random ones and then go from there. It's not like I can't do that. Might be the next plan because I've seen a lot of the YouTube versions that were already compilations from the TikTok. So, yeah, um, TikTok constantly um, gets a new one like every day or every day or two. So, yeah, for now, we're still going to stick to the YouTube ones that I definitely haven't caught yet. Um, this was actually going to be slightly shorter because it's like eight and a half minutes. This is even the babies have no respect. And once again, there's a hippo on my screen. And I'm not talking about me. So. <laughs> Yeah, so once again, these headphones are just wildin'. They are wildin'. They have no respect. But yeah, we're gonna get back to the reactions in five, four, three, two, one. No, if disrespect were a sport, hippos would be Hall of Fame. Because a fetus <laughs> hippo can treat a grown crocodile as a chew toy and get away with it because they both know the croc won't do anything about it. Maybe hippos will actually do this, where they'll groom and lick the tails of homicide in the form of a crocodile like a teething toddler. Baby hippos have no fear or respect for an animal that could probably one-shot them with those jaws. And that's because crocodiles might have a brain the size of a walnut, but even they're smart enough not to give a mother hippo a reason to catch a body. Because this is how that movie ends. So instead of turning the baby into past tense, the crocodile just has to sit there and take it. There's actually a reason hippos do this. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> I've known about this since I was seven, but I never found out why they go out of their way to violate them like this. My best guess is that hippos like the taste of the salt on the crocodile's tail and they just help themselves. Either that or hippos are so disrespectful that they don't even acknowledge crocodiles as living things. But normally crocodiles and hippos will tolerate each other's existence. And sometimes what? crocodiles will sunbathe while riding on the backs of this African homicide horse. The crocs never get too out of line because again, this is the end game. Oral <laughs> of this video. When your mom is big enough, you can get away with anything under the sun. Uh, actually? At this point, I'm not even gonna apologize. You know what you signed up for. And if my eyes have to bear witness, I'm bringing everyone else down with me. Those are Eponychium, but you probably heard them also be called Fairy Slippers. Those Fairy Slippers are a rubbery covering that goes over the hooves of a baby horse to protect its mother from the sharp edges while it's still inside her. Ew, it's like a pair of house the slippers fuck? that the baby horse wears until it finally joins the outside. And if you've never seen this before, it's because as soon as the Eponychium touches air, it starts to dry and fall off, especially once the foal starts walking. And sometimes the mother horse will pull the rubber boots off the baby with her teeth. And of course, Ow. if it's painful for the foal, it's only painful to look at. After the first 24 hours, most of the horse feathers are already gone. It looks bad, but it's actually for a really good reason. Baby horses have to be able to stand and walk as soon as possible, since the smell of a horse being born can attract predators. But, having fully formed hooves could put the mother in a pack if one of the sharp edges cuts her and causes internal bleeding. Moral of this video, this is what compromise looks like. <laughs> it just goes and gonna hold you that does look bad but don't worry it's worse than you think now i could be wrong i might be wrong but if i had to guess that is some type of eel especially a snaggle tooth snake eel you can find this demonic fire hose in the pacific ocean Yo, this one scratched up hooks can grow to three and a half feet and i'm gonna go ahead and guess they're one of those animals designed to live at the bottom of the ocean so when you bring them up to the surface they become deformed creations belonging to satan which is probably why it looks like a possessed balloon animal as a result of bloating after death and with those needles for teeth, we can guess that it eats small fish, crustaceans, and maybe even squid. And those teeth That's what it looks like dead? Escaping. And if that acid trip of a rough draft is anything like the moray eel, then they have a second set of pharyngeal jaws in its throat to make sure whatever goes in doesn't come out. But having a throat with a child lock does backfire when you choke yourself into an obituary. And I know is he eating a porcupine? Before, but it could also be a fang tooth snake eel, especially since they're found deeper down. And as much as I genuinely love freaking y'all out, they're pretty much harmless and probably wouldn't bite you unless you did something to deserve it. So this thing's probably dead. But this is proof that nature uh -huh. has drafts and its trash bin is the bottom of the ocean. Yo, I'm never going in the sea. I just ref This is an owl's see nest. Bones? You want to know what made these bones? You don't want to know what made these bones. Owls? This graveyard was found in a nest of one of the most homicidal things in the Amazon. The harpy eagle is a paralysis demon. I was close. That was an owl. They're one of the largest murder tweeties <clears throat> in the world. They have talons that are as big as the claws of a grizzly bear. Harpies use those vice grips to crush the bones of their prey on the way back to the nest. But there's one important thing about them that makes them a special type of menace. The worst thing about this eagle are those wings. Nature gave harpy eagles short wings, meaning not only can they fly through the jungle to catch prey, it means no name on the census is safe. 
which is why this steroid hell pigeon has one of the most disrespectful KDs out there. Just in this picture, you can see monkeys, sloths, armadillos, and lizards that never made it home because this Air Bundy caught him slipping. That is literally how they hunt. They'll sit in a tree for hours just waiting for a chance to activate someone's life insurance. Yeah, Buckwheat, don't be plain. Because you said please, here's five things you might not know about this Black Air Force Ferret. One of their main defenses Black is Air Force your anus Ferret. inside out and assaulting your senses with the smell. Honey badgers are cousins with skunks and wolverines, and they smell just as ripe. Their the booty hole is so vile that it apparently stuns bees and stops them from attacking. Which brings us to number two. Honey badgers are not immune to bee stings. They are resistant, so they probably would last longer than you, but if enough bees get on their dome, they could end up beeing a pack. But since mm. these hood weasels don't value life, not even their own, sometimes they'll actually sit there and keep eating while actively being stung by hundreds of bees. And because they are the way they are, sometimes they'll keep eating until they eventually get stung to death. Number three, it's believed that cheetah cubs evolved to look like honey badgers so they could avoid getting harassed by other animals. Meaning this African bush ferret is such a case that a predatory big cat has to impersonate them just to get more respect. Number four, in some parts of central India, they're called a name that translates to grave badger because apparently the honey badger has a reputation for digging out human graves and eating the corpses. And number five, honey badgers aren't real badgers. Those are true badgers and the honey badgers all the way over there. So when you hear me call this a steroid felony weasel, I'm only half kidding. <laughs> What, don't Shark. know they exist? Ow. Sharks have no fucking clue that camels exist. And oh boy, do I have a story for you. So like fun fact, actually mildly disturbing fact, camels are one of those animals that have no business swimming but do it anyway, and they're unnecessarily good at it. And an animal whose home address is the desert being able to pull up on you in the ocean is one of the biggest f you I do what I want moves from nature. <laughs> <laughs> drama here Why do they swim? The that are so comfortable with water that they'll cross rivers and even shallow stretches of the ocean as they look for food. And that's because these overgrown water donkeys love eating mangroves on islands offshore so much that they'll travel for hours to get it. There's actually a pretty good chance that at least one shark has seen one of these sand-loving hump jockeys out in the ocean. He told his friends they did not believe him. Moral of this video. If you're ever on a boat off the coast of a country like Algeria, you better be prepared to say what's up to a camel. This is a picture of an alligator riding on top of a manatee in Florida. I've already explained how gators aren't really a threat to full-grown manatees, and oftentimes the same reptile that would tear your arm completely off gives manatees the right of way in the water. But apparently these two hang out as friends. Yeah, they give each other fifth bumps a for some reason. This might be happening. Alligators are cold-blooded, so they love chilling in sunny spots. But I guess it figured an aquatic breathing beanbag chair was as good as any rock or log. Since manatees are basically the capybara of the water. Oh seriously, different animal, but same vibes. Either the mm. manatee doesn't mind or he's simply too unbothered to care. And to somehow make it even more wholesome, alligators and crocodiles often give each other piggyback rides. I don't really know why exactly they do this, but since it doesn't do anything for them in terms of survival, you can assume they do it just because it's fun. Yeah. It's probably a stretch, but there's a small chance that this is an alligator's way of playing with the manatee, and the manatee's just too unproblematic to stop him. Probably the first <laughs> thing, but for the sake of my mental health, I'm going to go with the plane. Let me tell you why this bird is the biggest menace to society you've never heard of. This is a southern giant petrel. His nickname is a stinker because they have the same dumb diet as vultures with none of the Ugh. This dumpster tweety takes all kinds of meat, rotting, decaying, disease, it don't matter, they don't discriminate. And no, just like not. vultures, when this overgrown corpse pigeon finds a carcass, it starts eating it ass first. They also <laughs> delete and eat penguin chicks, and they've even been known to drown gannet chicks by holding them underwater until their soul gets evicted. Basically performing a baptism and an abortion for the price of one. Also the giant inner name is because the biggest ones can have a wingspan of nearly 7 feet. Meaning you're probably shorter than the length of its wings. It's not even the worst thing about them. Because if the petrol thinks you're too close, it'll projectile vomit the contents of whatever disrespect was marinating in its garbage disposal of a Isn't that poisonous? If getting sprayed with half-eaten seal wasn't enough, it's actually so acidic that it can eat at the waterproof coating of seabirds' feathers. Think some of the seabirds that get hit can't swim. Since they have sea literally in their name, that's a dick move. Also the red faces <laughs> because they spend so much time violating the corpses of other animals. They're basically seagulls on crack. Those are the eyes of a bird that will never see heaven. Yeah, <laughs> cheetahs are big cats, and you're right, I probably should have explained that. So when you talk about wildcats, you have two flavors of felines. You got the panther genus and you got team felinae. Now the panther genus has lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards. And they all have one thing in common, it's that they can all roar. Except the snow leopard, but they're so cool they get in strictly off clout. And these are what people <laughs> call big cats, but you'll probably notice there's two big names missing. And that's because mountain lions and cheetahs can't roar, so they don't qualify as big cats, meaning they belong to the second group of cats. Which also includes ocelots, caracals, lynxes, and even the pet cat watching you watch this. Instead of roaring, I don't have a pet cat, even though I want one. If you're a cheetah, you also chirp like a bird because, of course, they do. Also, the name big cat doesn't really refer to their size because the smallest big cat is outweighed by the biggest little cat. Basically, it comes <laughs> down to if you can roar, you sit at the big cat lunch table. If you purr, you ride the little cat bus. And if you're a cheetah, you sit alone because honestly, what is this? No. <laughs> That's so fucking adorable. Is that? It's so adorable and sad at the same time. 
from last time. He just literally ch chirp. He just literally chirp. Oh no. Basically, the difference is one can roar, the others can't. Except the cheetahs who just kind of squeak like a bird. <laughs> uh, I still love cheetahs. I honestly love all of them. Like felines and cats and like all of them. I honestly, they're some of my favorite animals like of all time. I still want another pet cat. I just don't feel like I'm ready for one yet again. I mean, it's easy. It's not like I haven't had a cat before I took care of them. Like even as a teen, it wasn't an issue. I don't know. I think it's just something I am going to consider just doing. Probably sooner than later, I'll just get a pet cat. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Um, Guys, if you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow the socials as well that have been popping up. Um, I am trying to get some TikToks started, which may turn into some YouTube shorts, shorts from time to time. Um, also, some new series should be beginning soon, as soon as Invincible is done. That was a lot of stuttering. I apologize. And uh, yeah, just more hood nature. And I think Zoo Tears, the other recommended show, recommended YouTube series, I mean. So yeah, I'm just going to be uploading some more of that. So more zoo tiers, casual geographics, and let me know if there's any other videos that y'all recommend that's like animal based. I definitely love to check them out. So guys, once again, thank y'all so much for watching the village and I will see you all next time.